Dear friends, today we are going to start to discuss about the classifications of the Indian. In the last few lectures, we already discussed what do you mean by Indians, the different Indian components and its construction. Then we discussed about the Indian nomenclatures. Now, today, we are going to start to discuss about the classifications of the Indian. So basically, Indian is classified on two basic groups. One is an external combustion engine and another one is an internal combustion engine. Our point of concentration on internal combustion engines. So before this, we must have to understand a definition of external combustion and internal combustion. Then we can understand the difference between external and internal combustion engine. So, in this case, to understand the external combustion engine, I am just giving you one simple example. I think all of you are knowing about a steam power plant. In the steam power plant, water is very important component in the steam power plant. Then the steam generators or we can say the steam turbine is there. Then for generation of heat, in the case of steam power plant, always they are using a coal. So in the case of this steam power plant, coal will start to burn and that heat energy, whatever generated by the burning of coal, that heat energy is transferred to the water and then water will start to heat and that water will convert it into the steam and that steam will be forcing on the turbine blade and turbine will start to rotate with very high velocity. Okay, and then with the help of generator, electricity will generate. So this is the simple working principle of a steam power plant as we know. But if you concentrate on this, in the case of steam power plant, we are using a two motive fluids. Okay, what are those two motive fluids? One is a coal and another one is a water. Okay, in the case of external combustion engine, the combustion is done externally where the two motive fluids to be utilized for the generation of the final output. Okay, in the case of this one, first of all, we have to burn the coal and that coal's heat energy is transferred to the water. Then water will convert it into steam and then we can use that steam to force in the turbine blade. Is it right? But when we compare this external combustion engine with internal combustion engine, in the case of internal combustion engine, whatever combustion is there, it will happen inside one body. And in this case, we are using just a fuel like petrol or diesel and automatically with the help of engine, the heat energy will get from the chemical energy which present in the fuels okay means we are only using a single motive fluid that is a fuel like petrol or diesel in the case of internal combustion engine in simple word in the case of internal combustion engine we are using fuel like petrol and diesel and the chemical energy of fuel which present over there will convert it into heat energy okay as on in the case of external combustion engine, we have to use first of all coal, then by burning up coal that heat energy is transferred to the water, then water will convert it into steam and then we can use that steam to force in the turbine. But in the case of internal combustion engine, we are directly using fuel and the energy, chemical energy which present in the fuel directly utilized for uh, generation of heat. So this is the basic difference between the external combustion and internal combustion engine. So in the case of external combustion engine, if you remember in the earlier days, the steam engines was there. So steam engine was the example of external combustion engine uh, where the whole combustion were done outside. So that's why it, it was called as external combustion. Whereas in the case of internal combustion means whatever engines are right now present uh, in the world water combustion is there it happens inside that particular body of the engine okay so that it is called the internal combustion one now as our point of concentration on the internal combustion engine so this ic engines is broadly classified 
on the different basis. So one by one we are going to discuss and we are going to understand the complete classification of the engine. So the IC engine is first classified on the basis of engine design. Okay. So according to the design engine, this IC engine is subclassified as A reciprocating engine, B rotary or Wankel engine. Okay. Then after according to the working cycle. IC engine is again classified as that. According to the working cycle, one is auto cycle. It is also called as a petrol cycle or we can say uh, this is useful in the case of ESI engine. And another cycle that is called as a diesel cycle. This is also called as a CI engine, cycle for CI engine. Okay. Then the third one, the third basis uh, is number of stroke. So, it is classified as two stroke engine and four stroke engine both in the case of spark ignition si means spark ignition and ci means compression ignition engine generally si means petrol engine ci means diesel engines always remember whenever after this one when i am going to use the word si and ci you have to understood si means petrol engine ci means diesel engine now for number of stroke two stroke engine and four stroke engine these are the basic strokes of the engine then on the basis of fuel use so we can use petrol diesel lpg cng and so on as a fuel for the engine itself then on the basis of fuel supply and the mixture preparation the subclassification is carbureted types and the injected types later on we have to discuss on this each and every point in detail so the next basis is method of ignition so the a1 battery ignition method b magneto ignition method then the seventh one on the basis of method of cooling so we know the air cooled engine is there water cooled engine is there okay the number eight uh, classification on the basis of cylinder arrangement there will be a inline engine is there v-line engine radial engine opposed engine so much types are present under the cylinder arrangement okay means the engine cylinder can be arranged with this particular kind of a cylinder arrangement. So, the ninth classification is wall or port and the location design. So, it is again I head type, this is present for four stroke engine. B, that is L head type, uh, this is only for four stroke engine. Cross head type, scavenging type, loop scavenging, uniflow scavenging, and this all comes under two stroke engine. Okay, so this is on the basis of wall or port location design. Generally, walls are present in the four stroke engine and ports are present in the two stroke engine. We will discuss on this also later on. So, finally, uh, it bases on the applications or its use. So, the different varieties of engines are there according to the different applications like automotive engines we can use for land transport, marine engines for the propulsion of ships. Uh, then the aircraft engines, uh, industrial engines, locomotive engines, the heavy prime movers for the electrical generators. These are the few applications where we can use the different varieties of engines. So this is all about for the complete classification of the engine. This question will ask to you for six months. Generally, give a complete classification of engine. That time you have to write all these things in detail. Okay. So, these are the different picks of the, uh, the different varieties or the different types of engine. This is the general pick again, the piston, cylinder, spark plug, along with the uh, in some engines, fuel injectors are there, in some engines, spark plugs are there. Uh, generally, the injectors are used in the case of diesel engine and spark plug are used in the conventional type of a petrol engine. Okay, so this is called as a vertical engine where the operations of uh, piston reciprocating uh, or reciprocation action will be done in vertical direction. That's why it is called as a vertical engine. The cylinder arrangement is again in vertical direction. That's why it is called as a vertical engine. So this is the V engine. If you observe the piston 
piston will reciprocate in V direction or the cylinder has a V shape. That's why it is called as a V engine. This side is again in V shape and another side which is uh, actual the cut section. So another side is also in V shape. That's why it is called as a V engine itself. So again uh, the vertical engines uh, like this uh, cylinder arrangements are also there. This is a rotary engine. Later on, we'll talk in detail about this one also. So these are the picks of few very big engines for the ship propulsion, uh, such kind of a big engines for generation of huge amount of power uh, in marine applications where the uh, maximum power is required. Uh, this is one of the peak of it. So uh, this is another heavy engines along with uh, different mechanisms uh, which is useful in the case of heavy loading automobile engines like trucks, buses, etc. So uh, this is again peak of uh, air crop propulsion engine. Main important thing of this particular engine, this uh, should be lightweight because uh, have to use in the case of aircraft. That's why it will generate again huge amount of power so this is a peak of uh, the aircraft uh, propulsion engine itself so today we just discussed about the different classifications of the engine and again we had few picks of the engine so again when we see or when we talk about for the notes part again uh, we have uh, the notes for the classifications of ic engine here the complete classification is given like this one so just i'm scrolling this and uh, giving you the quick uh, review of this particular notes itself so like this if the question will ask you write the complete classification of ic engine that time you have to write all these things in detail along with the different classifications of the engine so that's all for this particular classification of the ic engine thank you friends